Good afternoon to everybody. Today uh, we are going to present our presentation under the topic of research on financial market and capital budgeting analysis. So these are the two members, Sherin Chamodi Arundhati and Avishka with Priyanka. So I am Sherin uh, and my part is uh, introduction. So in here we are, uh, we are focusing on the financial products and its market. So we divided it into two parts. The first part we discussed on the financial product and market uh, that is based on the bonds and shares. So those are compared with the uh, seven basic different criteria like ownership status, funding nature, risk, income, voting rights, maturity and priority in liquidization. Also we discussed the five financial principles and how how we are analyzing them by illustrating examples. So in the part two, we are discussed the uh, financial market of bond, uh, bonds and stocks that were this instrument traded and how to acquire the, them in the reference to Australia. And also the concept of sensitivity analysis that is based on the NPV calculation and as well as the break-even analysis. So now I am going to invite my friend Chamodi to continue on this part. Hi everyone, I am Chamodi Priyankar again. I am going to talk about financial products. There are three main products, bonds, uh, common stocks and preferred stocks. And these products can be com compared on the basis of uh, different criteria as shown here. So the first one is ownership status. This criteria from the investor end, which shows if the given financial product gives ownership of the company to the holder of the financial product. So based on common stocks and preferred stocks, uh, holder investors has uh, ownership status, whereas bonds, they don't have uh, ownership status. The next uh, criteria is nature of funding. This explains whether the fund is identified as equity or as a debt. So common stocks and preferred stocks, the, it's identified as equity, whereas bonds, it's a debt. And the next uh, criteria is risk. Every investment has some degree of risk. So this criteria measures which product is more risky and which is less. So you can see bond has low risk, preferred stocks has mid-level risk, and common st stocks has high level of risk. So the next criteria is income. This tells about the status of income earned by investors. So profit, uh, common stocks holders have, uh, they have dividend based on the profits of the company. And uh, preferred stocks and bonds, they have fixed payout uh, received by the investors. The next uh, criteria is voting right. It is the vote, uh, right to vote on the general meetings of shareholders. Uh, common stockholders has the right to vote. However, preferred stockholders and votes, they don't have voting rights. And maturity here means the maturity times of the instruments. So common stockholders, uh, they, they doesn't have a fixed maturity time, however, Preferred stocks and bonds, they have long-term maturity with fixed payouts. And the priority in liquidation, uh, this criteria differentiates the importance uh, in the event of company liquidation. So bonds comes first and preferred stocks are second and common stocks, they have the last uh, importance when it comes to company liquidation. So there are five basic principles of finance. Uh, first one is market price reflect information and time value has uh, money uh, time, time value of money uh, market price uh, money possess different value all the time and conflicts of interest and agency problem cash flows is the source of values risk return trade-off there is a positive relationship between risk and return where is uh, higher the risk and higher the return Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Arundhati. Uh, today I'm going to talk about Australian financial markets. Under Australian financial markets, there are two types, which are known as Australian bond markets and Australian share markets. Under Australian bond markets, there are five uh, categories, which are known as, uh, first one, place where the bonds are traded and 
different type of bonds. Secondly, the rating services of bonds. Thirdly, Australian government bonds versus Australian corporate bonds. Fourthly, uh, nature of yield to maturity relationship with coupon rates. Lastly, interest rates with and bond price. Uh, under Australian share markets, also there are five uh, criteria. Firstly, Australian stock market. Secondly, market capitalization. Thirdly, order share index in Australia. Fourthly, historical movement graph of all ordinary, ordinaries, which will be uh, explained in the report. And index trends and factors as the last point. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Avishka. I'm going to talk to you about the scenario given in our assignment uh, relating to risk analysis and project evaluation. Risk analysis and project evaluation means we are using number of numerous scenarios and we test it in order to find out which project should be selected and which gives us the least answers to incur losses. Uh, we can see in this uh, slide the example that we were given and based on the example, we have calculated our base NPV, which we uh, compare with the changed NPVs, which is 6.46 million. In the next slide, we can see that we have done some changes to our NPV and what, uh, how those changes impacted on our NPV. When the unit sales decreased by 10%, price per unit decreased, the NPV also decreased. When the variable cost increased, NPV also decreased. Fixed cost increased, NPV increased, but this was the least affected. NPV is uh, positive throughout all the stages in this scenario. Therefore, we can say that there is a very low or no risk uh, of a negative NPV. Therefore, the company should select this uh, project the presentation this is a part three and uh, part, under part three it's a part two NPV break-even analysis before the NPV break-even analysis I will explain you to how to calculate the break-even analysis what is the break-even analysis break-even analysis is a null situation where there is no any profit and a loss situation this is uh, and uh, we calculate the break-even like this break-even calculate fixed cost divided by contribution that's a basic concept uh, the uh, calculation of the break-even. However, uh, now we are going to talk about the NPV break-even analysis. What is the difference between break-even and the NPV break-even analysis? NPV break-even analysis differs the accounting break-even analysis. Uh, the uh, the non-cash events, because we, when we are calculating NPV break-even analysis, we consider the non-cash event like, the, for example, depreciation, like that. According to the other calculation, the given scenario, you, we have to sold 142,681 units, we have to sell being a uh, uh, NPV break-even analysis. Uh, now we are moving to the summary. Actually, it's a conclusion. We, uh, we are based on our assignment, we mainly uh, target on the uh, three financial instruments. It's a bond and the shares shares, uh, ordinary shares and the preferred shares. We discuss about the lives of invest investors and which investors must be done in the which scenario is identified. That means investors should know which, inve which uh, uh, investment instruments are better and other what, what is the most in uh, profitable uh, instrument before we invest it. Likewise, the briefly we discuss about the those materials and lastly a hypothesis scenario has been worked or no. The importance of NPV and insensitivity is given situation. We discuss this uh, according to our presentation.